Friday we've had in uh, just about three months. Um, we did a lot of broadcasting uh, from Kate's Creative Connections, which was great. Um, but now we are back on our regular Wednesday and Friday schedules. So it is great to have everybody here and watching. So thank you so much, <coughs> so much for joining me. It looks like everyone is here. Uh, Janice is over on the YouTube feed moderating there and Gita is over on our Facebook feed moderating there as beadshop.com. So it looks like we are ready to go. So let's do it in three, two, and one. There we are. All righty, everybody. I know that there are uh, a lot of new people watching uh, this uh, broadcast, more and more new people. So welcome to all of you. It's great to have you here. Um, on our bead shop feed, uh, you can find, of course, all of our um, broadcasts and uh, videos and all that kind of stuff by following our YouTube channel at beadshop.com. And of course, you can find everything you need uh, over at our website. Also, conveniently, beadshop.com. Alrighty, um, <clears throat> and lastly, if you haven't, you can jump over to our Facebook group. It's a private group. Uh, you do have to do a little applying to get in. You have to answer a few questions, and uh, we would love to have you over there. There's so much inspiration from um, our bead shop customers who post their projects and things like that. And there's always, Tria is always up to something over there in the group, posting uh, giveaways and contests and challenges. Um, we just had a wonderful um, wrap bracelet challenge um, that uh, the grand prize was my steadfast wrap that I made uh, during the Kate's Creative Connections series. And um, <clears throat> I believe it was, I was gonna double check and see who won. If someone, <laughs> Drea, if you're watching, I think, <clears throat> pardon me, I think it was Hilda who won that one. Um, I have to double check, it's over on my desk ready to send out. And of course it was in my brain. And now that I'm in front of you all, I can't remember. But it was announced in the group. Um, congratulations, it was great to have everybody um, participate in that challenge. Um, it looks like we've also got Brittany there um, and uh, over on YouTube. Um, I will tell you, our Free Tip Friday um, uh, broadcasts are always a little more casual than our Wednesday broadcasts. It's kind of a more off the cuff. It was Hilda. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I didn't forget. Thank you, um, uh, Gita, for for letting me know that. So congratulations and Hilda. I will send that bracelet out to you um, and wear it in good health and happiness. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know if any of you guys have uh, started the project from Wednesday, uh, Brittany's uh, In Place piece. It's something that I have been working on sporadically on and off since that since that broadcast. You saw me start it on Wednesday. Um, so I've got it going. So hopefully um, I'll give you some updates over in the group so you can see how it's coming along. I'm at the stringing part so it's a, a lot of fun. So um, thank you Brittany for that wonderful project. If you have not checked it out you can watch our bead shop live broadcast from Wednesday. It has a um, <coughs> really great uh, materials list that Brittany created as well as links to all uh, her videos and her technique videos for that project. So wonderful. So if you're um, not sure about macrame, micro macrame, jump in. Brittany's instructions are perfect and you will be super successful. Well, it looks like everyone is here and ready to jump in. So let's get this show on the road. Um, the uh, bracelet that we're going to do is, it, it's kind of a simple one. I was looking around on Wednesday to try and figure out what I was going to share with you guys here on Free Tip Friday, and um, I came across our keyholes chain. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to click on it right here so you guys can see it. Um, <clears throat> Drea has already gotten a blog up on our blog called The Bead Table, and you saw it in um, this morning in, um, in your newsletter. And uh, the newsletter uh, linked directly over to our blog. And so I thought I would use some of this keyhole chain that I, keyholes, that I really, really love. Let me get a little tighter and closer. And as you know, with, um, <coughs> pardon me, let me take a little drink of coffee here. There we go. The keyholes chain holds so many possibilities. Um, it's not a huge chain, right? It's, I'm gonna measure this for you so you guys can see it. Let me get my glasses on here so you can see it. Um, the keyholes measures, let me re-zero my caliper here, across not much, just about three and a half, just a little over three and a half millimeters wide. Um, so it's not super wide, but it's it's substantial, okay? And I thought it would really be fun. We did a lot of, when I was doing the um, Kate's Creative Connections, we did a lot of work with leather, we did a lot of work with knots. I pulled some of those projects over here, these two over here to the right of your screen. This would make a wonderful bracelet stacked with either a bracelet made from this butterfly knot or from <clears throat> this um, sun knot that I did here. It would also stack really well. This is throwing it back a ways. These are called sleek stackers. I think I did a bead shop live on this. You can see them, uh, the project under our bead shop live or under our bracelet category over uh, at beadshop.com. Um, also, I did, I think it was a free tip Friday where I talked about using stretch, stretch uh, cord, stretchy cord, and just strung uh, large hold beads on that. <coughs> it would stack up very well with these guys. <coughs> the tracks bracelet, Drea showed that, I think when we got the quarter tylas in. These are done with half so you can see, I'll put it a little closer to the camera. But you could also do this with a quarter tila, stack them up that way. Um, it would also look great stacked with that. And then this is one that I saw sitting on the wall that I don't know if you guys remember it. Um, I had kind of forgotten about it. I used our fine line chain. Let me undo it here. I used our fine line chain, which is a kind of those of you who are into vintage jewelry or into old kind of old school jewelry might notice uh, this is foxtail chain, right? A lot of vintage crystals and stuff were strung on foxtail chain. Um, we call it fine line and I strung, I used two strands to string the checkmates tiles here. And this is, I think, our stepping stones bead, but you could use any large hole, the tiara hishi, anything that has a larger hole will go on this, okay? So <clears throat> it's kind of a fun one. These pieces slide around on the chain a little bit, and you can see I crimped it with the fold over crimp, both strands in there, and just selected the small swivel for it. So this would also be a great stacker for it. And you can see I didn't fill up the whole bit of chain, so the it has a real vintage vibe to it, I think. So all of these would really, uh, I think, go with this new style uh, that I'm doing here. So let's let's take a look at it here right here. You can see, I think especially this sun knot would stack, especially you can see since I've used these blue beads here, they go really nicely uh, with kind of this metallic teal that I uh, used for this knot. Okay, so <clears throat> the bead that I'm using, so let me tell you what I'm using for this. Okay, this is the regular keyholes chain. Okay, 
and you can see what I've used here is a one millimeter leather and that one millimeter leather crosses you can see if I kind of turn the chain a little bit it crosses inside that loop of the keyholes okay so I can I can weave in and out I can skip you can see I've just made a kind of a small loop here but you could skip a couple and get more beads on this whatever this also would work well as the beginning of a wrap bracelet also right since you've got a lot of leather here this could be one section of a wrap so what I've used is the keyholes I've used it in the antique copper I used one millimeter distressed violet right and this is one of our newest six aughts. It's the 6-4242. I love this color. It's like a periwinkle blue, which is one of my favorite colors. I think it's just delicious. And I also, what I used, it's because I had it at home. I worked on this at home yesterday. I used this large swivel as the closure. And I've really got to close this jump ring well because believe it or not, I hardly have even any pliers at home. So I couldn't really open and close it all that well. Uh, but I use this big oval because I want to add just a couple of little dangles. I've used these maple leaf um, beads that I'm going to dangle from for this. Uh, and I've got some head pins and stuff, and I'll do that at the end. Okay, but a swivel clasp for things like this, I think, work out really, really well. This is the regular swivel, and just for contrast, on this other bracelet that I did here, this is the small swivel, so you can see the difference. Okay, so <clears throat> what I did was I just jumped in, and I started uh, weaving. And I just found the center of the cord and I started my weaving and I just went through and then I put my beads on and then I dropped down and I sent my cord through the hole in the keyholes, um, uh, through the keyholes chain. And so what I've got here for now, I, I think I'm going to string it to maybe about five, maybe about five and a half inches. You can't really see that, so let me adjust my my setup here so you can. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about sizing and closing, okay? Michelle is asking me what kind of pins these are. These are just sewing pins, that, and they're skinny, kind of. I use them for quilting. So they're regular sewing pins that I've used in my um, in my macrame board and using kind of pinning this down this chain down I pinned it up here I pinned it here and then I pinned it down here to keep everything kind of taut so when I do my weaving everything comes in pretty um, pretty evenly I think my mom actually got me these a, a while back they're just they might be quilting pins or something but any kind of pin that you have at home if you have t-pins t-pins work nicely but sometimes for me they're a little thick right the, the the pin is a little heavy so I just go to a regular just good old-fashioned sewing pin and it works nicely okay so let me show you how uh, how to do this essentially all you do couldn't be easier is I put <clears throat> in my one millimeter. Now the one millimeter leather is the one to use for this because that's what fits. It fits in a double pass through this keyhole chain. Okay, so let me get a little tighter so you guys can see my movement here. There we go. And I'm gonna just put on, I'm gonna get my six aught. Let me undo this side too. And at the end of my um, leather, and I just pulled this leather out of our kind of scrap leather bin, but I would say that you need maybe two yards, probably not that much, probably, but if you have a good, a good length, maybe even probably a little more than a yard um, because, you know, it depends on how large, how many beads you put on 
etc. Okay, so this uh, it does have a little bit of a William Morris kind of feel to it, Krista. Thanks. It kind of has that color scheme. I'm a big Morris fan for sure. So I just string these on and string these on, and then you can see I skip. I don't put it through here. I skip that one and I put it through that keyhole, that hole in the keyhole, and then that one. The holes are pretty large in here, so you can see it just slides through. I don't have to, um, I don't have to struggle with it. Okay, so let me uh, get a few more here. And again, at the beginning, when you start this chain, um, or start this weave, just find the center of your cord. And I started it just right off the bat, right there, by putting the beads on, skipping, and just going through. So I'm just continuing that movement here. So I'm going to go through there. And you can see I usually, I, this is what the rhythm I got into, I just put it through. And I was trying to be consistent and I think I was throughout that when I pass the leather cord through that the left hand cord uh, is on the bottom though I can see it's not always consistent and the right hand cord is on the top. It might be able, uh, it might make this sit a little bit better but again it, may, it might not. It depends on how fussy you want to be. These are six aughts um, and the six aughts I think fit really effortless, effortlessly on this one millimeter, but you could always use anything that's a small bead that has a big hole. Um, you know my favorite bead in the whole wide world, shadows, right? Um, there was some chatter on the bead shop group, the Facebook group, um, and people were looking at the shadows in black. Some people were like, wait a minute, I didn't know that you had the beloved shadow bead in black. And so it was kind of a trending thing on there. So this black shadow, this would be, I think, a great um, guy bracelet, especially if you use the keyholes in silver or antique silver. Um, and you could use black leather and the black shadows bead. It would look tea terrific, I think. So, you know, but you, you decide what you, what you like, okay? So really easy, really simple. Just find that center. Like if I were starting here, I would have put my whole cord through to the center of the cord here. I would put a six aught on, skip one of the keyholes, put it through the second keyhole below, and just kind of try and keep your tension even it it kind of automatically um, gives you uh, the correct tension after you put the second one in you kind of put this bad boy in like this and then you tighten a little bit okay like this all right um, so let's just continue on Put this guy through. Sometimes I do it this way. I put him, whoops, that one just dropped. Uh, let me get a little wider here because you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'll just get this one and then I'll get the second one, put it on. And we'll just, I'll just pass it through here and here like this. Oh, Curtis is saying silver chain with turquoise leather and black shadows. Yes, that would look gorgeous. Um, the pop of color would come from the leather. It would really stand out. I kind of like this contrasting kind of this purpley um, periwinkle kind of thing I've got going on here. Um, the chain is called keyholes. You can find at the full recipe for this over on our blog. Uh, you can access the blog over on the beadshop.com website um, or just type into your search bar bead table blog or bead shop blog and it'll pop right up. Okay. 
Um, the, uh, the leather is the one millimeter. You could use the 0.5 for sure. You could also use the one millimeter surfer cord if leather isn't your gig, right? You could do that too. Um, I can see over in the chat, my mom is saying she is hand sewing. I bet she's hand sewing a quilt binding, maybe. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm guessing, Ma. I can't imagine what else you might be hand sewing, though you never know. I know that you've been working um, on some quilts during this shelter in place. My mom is a very accomplished quiltist. It's where I got my quilting gene from. And my um, ability to really uh, wrangle in needles and needles and thread. My thread management comes from quilting for sure and hand sewing for sure. So all of those needle arts run in the family. Gita over on the YouTube feed is saying over in Denmark it's Father's Day. You guys celebrate Father's Day a little bit sooner than we do here in the States, a little bit earlier, but many happy Father's Day to your pops. Gita, I know that you've posted some pictures and stuff with your dad, so happy Father's Day to Gita's papa over there in Denmark. All right, so we've got about six inches. This looks about right, and you can see it goes, um, all right, Lynn's saying right cord on top. I know, see, I put the left cord on top. Um, you can be a little more, a little more exacting. Um, I think O beads might work. You know, I don't have any here. Um, we can check um, this, the whole size of the O bead. I might have some sitting here though. Hang on. I might. Nope. That's, that's, let me just look. Um, we can also check. It should say the whole size, but I have, do I have some O beads? Just one. I just need one stinking O bead. Let me see. Maybe there's one here. Yeah. Oh, and thanks, Drea. Drea is saying that the O beads are, oh, and look, I have just like, couple right here because I never clean up. So here's an O bead right here. And you can see, yes, they fit perfectly on there. So no troubles. An O bead along the sides of these would look great. You can stack as many beads as you like on this little scallop that you've got here, right? Um, and you could skip two so your scallop is bigger, right? There we go, Lynn, I got it right that time, passing the right hand side on the top. All right, so now to close this off, um, I haven't, um, um, oh, my mom's making pin cushions. That's right, you told me you were making pin cushions. That's right, you're sewing them closed. Well, that's even better. So I'm going to say that I'm going to go ahead and, and I thought, I thought it through a little bit yesterday, but I was like, well, I'm just going to finish it on air and I'll figure it out. That's why the, um, <laughs> that's why free tip Friday is so casual. So let me pin it in here so it doesn't move too much. I am going to just go ahead. I know that this is the end right here with this keyhole, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this one. Cut this one away so it's going to end right there. Now I'm going to have to figure out how to end the leather. Okay, but that one's cut. So there it's done. So now what I think, what I was thinking I can do is I can just bring this leather up and around and I can either knot this or silk wrap it and from last 
or from the my Kate's Creative Connections, I still have a lot of stuff sitting here on my work table. I have this 0.4 millimeter, right? So it's, uh, and it's in the ink blue, okay? So um, I will, I'm going to use that to silk wrap. Yeah, let me adjust this a little bit so you guys can see it. Let me unpin it. Let me get it a little more to the center of the screen for you guys. There we go. I'm going to get a little tighter here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm not going to cut any of this leather or anything away. I'm just going to silk wrap this and let's see how it looks. It may look better as just a knot, right? I don't know. But let's see, I want to add a little pop of color, right? So can you see how it's coming around the side of that keyhole chain? There's almost like a little trough in there. I could also crimp it with like a transition bead or something, but let me... We have a great skill builder on the silk wrapping, so I'm not going to go over it too much here. And I don't need a whole lot of wrapping. But essentially, you make that loop. And one of the tails that you're silk wrapping, you know, I'm going to wrap towards the chain rather than away from it because it's a little hard to get it tight up against that chain. Can you see that? Okay, and then here's this. Thank you guys so much for all of your kind words today about my hair and about this project. You know, I gave myself, I, I you know, I got my hair cut back before quarantine happened, right? And it was getting a little long. You know, when you cut your hair really short, it feels like, oh my gosh, it's growing. I've got to get a haircut. Well, we're still under a shelter in place order here. So our beauty salons are not open yet, which is okay. That's cool. That's fine. Uh, but I really needed a flip and trim for my hair. So Chris and I did it punk rock style, high school style. He got out the shears and cut the sides in the back and then I just pretended I knew what I was doing and cut the top <laughs> with, I was all, I'm just going to pretend I'm a hairdresser and do it. So I had a little bit of a hair trim so it was kind of, so it was kind of fun. Though so I'm looking forward to uh, my hairdresser coming back. Um, but you know what? It's a small inconvenience, so I just went for it and did a little hair trim. Why not? Everybody's doing it. So see here, so I've done that silk wrap there, and that I think looks pretty good. Okay. And then um, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to clip away the rest of the, the Chinese knotting cord. I could put a little glue, but there's no real need to do that. I could also use my thread burner, but for now, I'm just going to come in for time's sake and just clip this. So now, this is where I need to size this, okay? And you can see, and I want you to see this up close. It looks kind of pretty, I think. I do need my thread burner to get that last little bit, but maybe I can trim it just a little. But I'll do that off air. Then uh, I think it really sh it contrasts or matches nicely, brings this blue in. So let me widen the camera up a bit. And you can see, oh, I was, good thing I, I actually probably should not have put that last, that last section there. I should have tried it on because I really want it to close actually right here, right? So let me just show you then. Uh, if you do that, it's super easy to fix. All I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully cut that silk wrapping away. I'm going to do this at Kate speed so we don't take up too much time. 
but I take this off. This goes to show you should always measure, right? Let me try this again. And again, it's not quite, so I'm going to take this one off. And then I'll give you a full measurement. My wrist size, and yeah, Jance is saying anklet. Perfect, JP, perfect. Um, yeah, that's that's better. Uh, I'll give you a length. My wrist size is six and a half inches. So let me tell you how much of this beaded length I have. Door to door, the beaded length is about five and a half. Didn't I say I needed about five inches, right? I should have listened to myself. I was just having so much fun chatting with all of you. So this is about six and a half inches right here, including the clasp, what I say door to door, okay? So, um, yeah, I see a lot of comments about getting your roots done. You know what? I'm just growing it out. I just cut it all short, and I am embracing the gray. We'll see what happens. We'll see how I feel about that, but um, it was good. Yeah, and I've been cutting Chris's hair in quarantine, just getting those shears short on the sides, a little taller on top, right? Again, pretending I'm a hairdresser. Why not? But it would be a great a great anklet. It was probably the right anklet size. So let me re-silk wrap this. No big deal, right? We're just gonna come in. We'll lay this back on top. We'll just silk wrap it again. It's okay. That's the beauty again of these really free tip Friday off the cuff free tip Fridays. Not only do I show you what to do. I show you what not to do, right? Who wants to be too polished? What you do want to do is you want to make sure that the, the, the leather cord, can you see here? Let me pull it through and then I'll explain what I'm doing here. But um, you want to make sure that this cord is even around your chain so that it's not um, off kilter or off center as you are wrapping it. There we go, and it's going to come through, pop through. There it goes, I can feel it. And tighten that up. There we go. And you can see here how I didn't make anything too tight so this scallop has room right and this kind of little scallop has room to to kind of move a little bit too all right so let's do this again uh and clip this away and clip this away And the knot that I would do if I were going to knot this, Kim is asking, I'd just do a simple overhand knot, probably. I'd just bring, and that's what I think I'll do on the end here, okay? So I will come in, I'm going to bring this around. It's going to close about right here. This will just close right in. So I'm going to tie that knot about right here. And the knot I would tie is a simple overhand around and again you could, let me see, I'm having trouble seeing the, the YouTube chat so let me see there. Um, could I close it after I put on a bead and just a touch of blue and then an overhand knot? Yeah, you could do that too. I also had a, what I didn't put on and I thought I might want, though, let me show you this before I, before I do anything. I did put, um, like a Pony Express in here. You could, that might, it might come over the, the silk wrapping. So see, if you wanted to hide that silk wrap, you could by just using that Pony Express too, right? Which I kind of like the looks of. I don't know. I like that too. But 
I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it on there since I told Drea to put it in the list. Let's take a look. I could just come in with that overhand knot, trying not to twist anything. I'm just giving you some different options. Right. And then, <clears throat> let's take a look and see how it fits. I need to kind of put it close to myself off camera, so give me just a second to close it, and then I'll show you so I'm not struggling on camera here. I'm struggling off camera <laughs> to get it onto my wrist, but there you go. So you can see the... the, the um, swivel clasp just goes right in it. Yeah, and, and it could go into uh, the last link, though the last link is a little, I feel like it's a little small, but you could try it, and you could also put a um, jump ring into this last link. But I kind of like the kind of a little off-kilter kind of goofy closure like that. Now I'm going to do the same closure like I did on these knots here, this figure eight that I do. Well, the figure eight actually might be kind of big. Maybe I'll just do a double overhand. So let's make some little tassels, okay? I'm going to do my uh, two um, two of the six knots and a double overhand would just go through once and I go through twice. But you know, pull out your your kind of different beading skills or different knotting skills and close this off. Again, now if this were a wrap, I could just put that Pony Express there. Um, underneath I could have silk wrapped, added my thread for laddering or for infinity stitch, and I could have kept going with this right instead of just a, sing a single strand it would be great in a wrap so um you know whatever whatever you want to do these are just a springboard of ideas for you to take where you will so there's that double hand overhand let me close this and I'm going to do just a single bead on the other one. Let me get that out of the way. And a double overhand. Again, going through once, going through twice. And I purposefully do not make them the same length because I want a little bit of style there at the end. And then let's go ahead and clasp it. It feels kind of nice and substantial. I like the feeling of this one. Now, if you wanted, this is just looping through that leather loop, right? I could also macrame this leather loop over the leather strands. We've done that before with different closures for um, for uh, wrap bracelets. Let me really... Oh, before I close this, let's not forget our friends. I'm going to wire wrap these at Kate Speed, these little dangles. So let me do these fast, fast, because I really, I don't know, I, I liked these. People have been, I don't know, they've been trending lately, and as I fill orders, I see you guys buying these leaves, and I'm like, I like these leaves, so I'm, I'm going to use them. So I'm just going to do, we've got some great tutorials on the wire wraps. Um, I'm preferring the wire wrap rather than the rosary loop, so it won't come off. And since I've attached everything to a jump ring, 
um, I'm just going to attach these with uh, by opening and closing that jump ring. So there's that one. I'll cut off the remainder later. I'm going to put the blue bead this time on the bottom instead of on the top. These are our regular 21 gauge head pins. Well, you know what? I like I like the silhouette both on the top. So I'm gonna do this. And this, and I like two, but you could do more or less or none or a different bead or I don't know, whatever. All of the leaves that we have, these are the maple leaves and we have them in different let me get that out of the way so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Um, we have a lot of different leaves, so you could kind of mix it up there. Um, these opal, blue opal, and copper wash, I think are so pretty, and they go with this 6-4242 so well. Let me go ahead and cut away that extra wire, being very careful not to hit myself or the camera. Cover your wire as you clip it off, you guys. You want to make sure that it doesn't land in your face. It's very important. First rule of wire etiquette. When I used to teach wire wrapping in uh, our classroom, both at our brick and mortar bead shop and at my store later in San Francisco, that was the first rule. And that was the big rule. Oh yeah, the hibiscus charm would look nice to add to this as a third one. I agree. But that that wire rule was a big one. You didn't incur my wrath too much in class, but flying wire usually did. There we go. And I'm going to close that up nicely, finally, with some good pliers. So you can see, no you can't because it's not in frame, there we go. So you can see how cute, and I do like, you know what, I think that pony, I knew I'd pulled it for a reason. I like that the silk wrap is underneath there, but I like the way that the pony the Pony Express, rather, um, gives uh, gives us a little more of a substantial feeling here that echoes the substantial feeling of the clasp. All right, so that is it. Before I do anything else, I'm going to take a photo of it laid out right here for Drea. So I don't forget, so here it comes. Drea's photo, you can kind of see my phone in there, so excuse me for just a moment. There we are, that's done. Whoops, sorry, and I just hit the camera. Sorry about that, uh, but that's it. So uh, yeah, you know, choose your charm, the, the bee charm, the arrow charm, no charms, uh, whatever works, right? And yeah, it is, I think, Julie, I agree with you, Julie's saying it's a great look for not that much work, right? It's a super quick project. This keyhole chain, I think, is just, sometimes I think it gets overlooked, and I just adore it. Uh, we sell it by the foot, so um, I think I, I cut a, a foot of this, so I do have enough um, for the one foot of chain. You can get two bracelets um, out of this right because this section was about six inches of chain so uh, it would play extremely well with our Bollywood stacks right um, I happen just to have this one sitting over on the wall this is one where I just did the half hitch um, you know the Bollywood with just a um, uh, what is that? It's a English cut in the center, right? That would stack up really nicely, just simple like that. Um, I don't know. Stack it with a wrap 
Um, I'm trying to see what else I have here, just sitting here on the wall. I, again, love how these two look together, right? And even then putting this guy in, that would make a really nice stack, a curated stack. The Trax bracelet, though, I think also looks good with it. And then that funny little one that I did with the um, Checkmates tiles sliding on the fine line is also cool, I think. Um, but that's it. That's all, that's all she wrote on this one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this installment. Uh, as always, uh, you can find all of our projects and products uh, over on our website, beadshop.com. Also a link to that blog post that Drea uh, put up um, that lists everything you need, but essentially you need our keyholes chain, some one millimeter leather, a six aught bead, the uh, regular swivel clasp, that Pony Express if you like, the oval jump ring, and the, um, you know, something for the dangles. I used the, um, I used the, uh, the maple leaves, right? Alrighty. Uh, well, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I will see you guys next week. Next week we have a really, I'll give you a quick sneak peek, sneaky peek. We have a beautiful, let me get it over here, a really great, there we go, float necklace. It's Krista's, and you'll see this more uh, next week on our, uh, in the newsletter and on the website. It'll be up as a project. This is the Odyssey project as interpreted by Krista Hennessy, one of our bead table members, and you've seen Krista come on the air with me. So she's given it um, a little bit of a new twist. So that's what we've got next Wednesday. And next Friday, I'm going to be working with some new pieces that we're launching next week from Tiara Cast. So that's all coming up. Um, I want everybody to have a safe and good weekend. Uh, as we know, as our company, or as our company and our country opens up more and more. We still need to remember to wash our hands. Wear those masks and whatever you are doing this weekend, if you are exercising your free speech rights or if you're just going uh, shopping. Either way, stay safe, uh, be careful out there, and thank you again so much for your support. Our small business could not uh, be here without you. I will see you on Wednesday for another fantastic project on uh, Bead Shop Live, 8, uh, 10.30 uh, a.m. Pacific Time. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend.